Thank you, thank you. Thank you, worship team. Wow. Hey, before I get started, I was talking to Pastor earlier, and I said, you know, that uh, how about I just sit over there and let the Holy Spirit minister to you tonight? Well, he reminded me, you know, I had to do a little bit of the work. So I'm, I'm really happy to see all of you here this evening. It's nice to be surrounded by family and friends and brothers and sisters in Christ. Because I know that you're going to give me grace. <laughs> because I know you love me because I love you. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I also want to welcome our online guests. Anyone watching online? I'm not Pastor Miller, so I didn't steal his identity. But I know he's up and working for the Lord right now up at Praise Chapel, so we'll keep him lifted in prayer. And I want, if each one of you again would do me just one thing, turn to the person next to you and tell them what your name is. If you just do that. I know it sounds a little strange. They, just tell them. I want you to speak out your name, confess your name to the person sitting next to you. You know, it's amazing how times we sit and we see people in church, but we don't know what their name is. So, praise the Lord. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm just sort of waiting on the Holy Spirit to show up, so we'll just take our time. You know, what's the rush, right? We're all here on a Wednesday night, and I got to tell you, it's good to be here. So go ahead and everybody be seated. I want to go ahead and open us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Father, for this evening, Father God. I just thank you for this word that you've given me, Father God. I pray, Father that I will decrease so that you may increase, Father, that this word, Father, will not be from me but from you, Father God, that you'll minister the word through me this evening, Father God, and I pray, Father God, that it will not return void as your word tells us. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for all of those that are listening, Father. I pray that those who have an ear will hear, Father God, that you'll pierce their heart with the word of God. So we just thank you, Heavenly Father, for all you're doing and all you've done and all I know you will complete continue to do. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's get a hallelujah going there. Let's. Okay, there we go. There we go. I want to make sure everybody's out there is listening. Okay, I got to tell you, I struggled a little bit with the message, not with the message, but with the title of the message. I don't know, we didn't get it up there, but my, my message I have on tonight is on identity theft. I know there's a lot you hear about identity theft going on right now. Well, then I thought, you know what? Uh, I was talking to Susie, and I was going over my message, and, and her and I, was. she says, wow, that, that also sounds like that could fall into identity crisis. I don't know if any of you have ever experienced that before, but it, maybe you've had an identity crisis. You're going through something, and you're, you're not quite sure how to deal with it. So anyways, what I want to do is I want to give a plug real quick also, if I could, for the care groups out there. We've been, we just finished up the study on the armor of God. Okay, praise the Lord. That's Ephesians 6, 10, and 12. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. If you'd like to turn there with me, go ahead. It's Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, where it says, verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the whales of the devil. And verse 12 tells us that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I know sometimes we may have had a dispute with somebody or, or something, somebody cut us off on the freeway or or somebody at work upset us, or whatever the case may be. You know, you can build your own scenario on that. But I believe that God gave us this word in order so that we could protect ourselves. He gave us the word on the armor of God, so that wherever we go, we're covered. Because, you know, there's a real enemy out there, and he wants to steal your identity. You know, we're hearing about that all the time, right? The who you are. You know, I joke around a little bit. I, I, I gave myself a new name when I got saved, I, was, I used somebody for a while because somebody was the guy that would do the other end of the table or somebody would pick that up or somebody this. But then I thought people might think I was thinking highly of myself than I ought to. So I, a new name I gave myself was Who. Now, who could have a problem with that, right? So I did Lee Who, and I've been using Lee Who for probably about 15 years. 
because I wanted to make sure that if anybody needed to get a hold of me, they could just ask for Lee, and then when they said who, they would know who they were talking about. They said, oh, yes, Lee who? We know who you're talking about. Well, you know, as we become Christians, we've been given a new identity. And if you know, and if you know Christ, the devil will send out people to remind you who you were, to try to bring up your past. Some of the, sometimes, unfortunately, those enemies come in the coming with a face on them, it might be your family, might be your friends, might be your co-workers, and you begin to feel a little uncertainty or lack of conviction who God says you are because, you know, they keep reminding you who you are or who you were, not who you are, but who you were. It takes me to the story I was reading again up on today, the story of Job. You know, Job came through some, it looks like we got mostly family here, and I believe we've all been through the study of Job, or we've read the word Job. I was talking to a brother this evening, and I was telling he was telling me, hey, Lee, I've been reading through the book of Job, and I said, oh, you're going to enjoy tonight's message. I'm not going to get into the whole message, but the whole point of the Job, as I was reading in chapter 1 of Job, it was talking about all that had been taken away from him. You know, the, the God allowed things to happen to Job, but he did tell the devil that he couldn't take his life, but he could bring all this else on him. And he, as he brought all this on, Job lost all of his cattle, lost his sheep, lost his camels, lost his money, and then ultimately lost his, his uh, sons. And I thought, he's lost everything. And you know what interest, I thought, wow, man, oh, man. I don't know how I would handle that. But I wanna, I'm going to go there real quick. Just I want to read what Job did about it. I don't know that I would have been that strong, but I'm sure glad he was because he gave me an example of, the way I would like to be, I'd like to say, oh, yeah, I'd handle it like that too. But I don't believe I could. After all this had happened to Job, it says in chapter 1, verse 20, it says, then Job arose. And this is after all this has come on Job. Everything's coming on him. This was his response. Job then arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. He worshipped. He didn't cry. He didn't complain. He worshiped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. Tether the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, Job, who knew who he was, and the devil couldn't steal his identity, says in verse 22, it says, In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I'm thinking, what a strong man that knows who he was, not allowing the devil to come in and steal his identity. You know, that, that I find that in people in your past sometimes want to come up and just keep bringing up your past, bringing up your past. The main thing is, is that you got to remember who you are, right? So the question is, is when you get up in the morning or sometime maybe you're getting ready to go somewhere and you look in the mirror, who do you see? Who's looking back at you? Did you see the do you see the man of God you'd like to be, or did you see the people, the person that people have convinced you that you were? Do you see the person that that maybe can't make it? Do you see the person that maybe can't do it? Do you see the loser? Do you see the alcoholic? Do you see the drug addict? Do you see that old person staring back at you? Now I'm speaking to Christians tonight. You know, I'm speaking to saved people. That's what this message is for. Wednesday night, I know that the majority of the people that come in here have been saved, accepted Jesus into their heart. But those are the ones, why else would they need to steal your identity? You're strong in Christ. Greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. That's the person you want to weaken, right? So when you get up in the morning, who do you look at? Well, it says in James chapter 1, verses 23 and 24, if you like to turn there, it says, for if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straight away forgetteth the manner of man he was. Praise the Lord. Or do you see somebody that's being molded, stretched, pulled, tugged on? I was speaking to a young sister this evening and I was this her and I was talking, this message came up on this part. I said, you know, the thing about being a Christian, constantly being stretched, you're constantly being pulled. And I reminded her, I said, you know, when I was a little kid, I can remember when I was growing. 
And I don't know if any others had this same condition I had. I, man, I'm telling you what, it hurt. I mean, my bones was pulling and aching and everything else as those bones were growing and stretching. And I was getting, well, I never grew very tall, but I grew taller. <laughs> Does anybody here remember those growing pains we had? Not unlike being a Christian, is it? Those growing pains you feel, you know, that you're being tugged and you're being pulled and you're being molded and shaped. <laughs> Reminds me of a scripture I didn't write down. But you know that, uh, Susie, do you remember this here? I am the potter, and you are the clay. We're just molding you and shaping you, cutting off those sharp edges, holding you over the fire. Praise the Lord, he didn't drop us in there, right? He just held us over it, trying to purify us. He didn't drop us in the fire. Thank you, Lord. But if he had let, if he'd slipped, you know, he'd have reached down and picked us up. You know, we saw when it happened to Peter, right, when he stepped out on the water and Jesus took his eyes off. The Lord was right there, and he reached down and grabbed Peter up. Thank you, Lord, for that. You know, it says, it says in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, anybody here in Christ, right? Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and shout it out. Don't be, a, don't be afraid to get loud on me. I don't mind. Don't interrupt me. If you do it long enough, I'll get a, I'll get a drink of water. <laughs> if you hold the floor long enough, okay? It says here, it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things become new. So let that old man go away. You know, I had thought about it, but then again, I didn't want to get overly dramatic. I thought about maybe we should have a, mo you know, a moment of silence. You know, for that old man that passed away, right? I mean, I know at funerals all the time, they always have a moment of silence. We won't do that tonight. But that's okay, right? Because I'm a new creation in Christ. Our new, he calls us a new creature in Christ, but I'm sure there's different translations of that. King James calls it a new creature in Christ. So you got to step into your new identity. Show your family and friends who you are now. Not who you were. They're been waiting on somebody in the family to step up and break the mold, right? I can remember, I, I know people waited on me for a very long time. I always loved the Lord. I always loved Jesus. But I was 52 years old or 51, somewhere in there, before I started serving the Lord, before I, you know, I submitted, before I gave in and says, okay, I'm yours. People waited a long time. And since then, you know, we've been able to see other family members also come and serve the Lord. There's family members that you have in your family that are waiting on you. So don't let the devil steal. You know, he's not just going to steal it from you. He's going to take it out of your family. You are the one. You know how I know you're the one? Because you're here. <laughs> so give yourself a pat on the back. You're breaking the mold. You're setting a new path. You know, Remind yourself of who I am. We're going to get to that later on, all right? If you're born again, you have, given, you have been given the gift of a new identity, individuality, uniqueness, distinctness in Christ Jesus. You've been given a new identity from where you were before. You have a new name. I gave myself a name of Lee Hu. You know, Paul, Paul's name was Saul, and then he became Paul, and and Jacob's name was Jacob, and then he became Israel. And, you know, uh, Abraham or Abram was Abraham. God gave them new names. You know, he gave us new names like you're saved, you're sanctified, you know, you're mine, you're the child of God now. You know, so. I always told my kids, when you, know, when you go out to play, pay attention to what you're doing because, you know, you represent the family out there. You represent what kind of parent I am. Right? Well, God calls us his children. So when we're out there playing, doing whatever we're doing, working, playing, we represent the Lord. We've got to pay attention to what we're doing out there. We live in a glass house now. Don't let the devil take that away from you. Don't let him pull the shades on that glass house. So praise the Lord. Because you know how I know he's going to do that? Because it tells us in the Bible. It says in John 10.10 10, that the thief cometh but not to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus also said, I have come that they might have life. They might have life more 
abundantly. Now, I don't want somebody stealing my inheritance, do you? Thank you, Jesus. But I do believe that it says, I believe that, that if we don't continue to remind ourselves who we are in Christ, we don't continue in the Word, we don't continue in prayer, coming to church and hearing a great message like this one that the Lord's ministering through me to you, I pray He is, because I pray I decreased. He set me up to bring this message to you. I believe this message isn't just for you. If I could sit down there and just listen to this on a recording, I'd be doing it, because this is for me as well. We not, none of us ever should forget whose we are. We belong to the Lord God Almighty, paid by the blood of the Lamb. But if we haven't changed our old habits, this is my, my, my belief, if we haven't changed our old habits, I'm still unsure who we are. First Peter says, be sober. It says, be vigilant. Because you are at your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking who he may destroy or devour. Have you ever been to the zoo and seen those lions? You know, we, they got a new encounter at the zoo right now. I know uh, Hannah works at the zoo. But I was, we were at the zoo, and Susie and I was going around to their new African encounter there. And I'm looking up here, and there's, I don't know, what is that, the black leopard or something. And I'm looking up at him, a great big cat. And I'm looking, and he's like, I mean, he's like right there. And I'm looking at the fencing. They got him fenced in, and it doesn't even look like chain link. It looks almost like chicken wire. And I'm thinking, I hope that's not chicken wire, because that thing I know could devour me. He's right there. He's not like, you know, a lot of those are way out in distance, and you can taunt them or whatever and, and get away with it. But he's right there. Well, that's the way your enemy is. He's right there, just waiting, waiting for you to let your guard down so he may devour you. Anyways, moving on. You know, if we've walked this walk long enough, we know that it's not an easy walk. You know, we're constantly coming up with challenges of this and someone saying that and we're trying to hold our tongue and we're trying to do the right thing and, you know, we're trying to make sure that we minister the Word or, and, and, and you just do what's been asked of us to do by the, by the Word of God, by the Bible. And it's, over time, you know, it, it just, you, you, you've come to the conclusion this is not an easy walk. I believe if it was an easy walk, man, we'd have people lined up all the way around the block and we'd have probably have to sell tickets because there, you know, just there would just be so many people. We'd have to expand. It's not an easy walk, but it does tell us in John six thirty three: these things I have spoken unto you that you may be, you might have peace in the world. Shall have in the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. You know, the battle's already won. That's what we got to claim. The battle is already won. I am excited about that. I'm excited that I get, a, I get a, a book that tells me that I get to win if I'm on this team. I get that I know what the beginning is, and I know what the end is, and I know what the in-between is. I know what the past was. I know what the future holds. I know where I'm going. I know where I've been, but I know where I'm going, which is more important than where I've been. We have that in our hand. Isn't that amazing? So the world's out there getting running scared. We're going, well, that's okay. We know where we're going. We know what's going on. This is no surprise to us. And it certainly isn't any surprise to God. We have the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead. Give him a hand clap. You know, the Word tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Therefore, it says, therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You know, for the longest time, uh, when we, I first heard that scripture, you know, a lot of us in our beginning of our walk, we didn't hear, we didn't hear the whole scripture. We went to the store today to, to, to buy a shirt, and it said 40% off, and I got all excited about that. And that's all I read, 40% off. Wow, man, that's a really good deal because that that's a lot of money for that shirt. But 40% off is a really good deal, right? So I read 40% off, and then you get up to the checkout stand, and you find out 
First one's full price, the second one's 40% off. <laughs> kind of goes that way with the verse too, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Because here I'm going to read the whole verse to you now. This is in John, uh, uh, or where was I? John 16:33. Or I'm sorry, lost my place. Romans 8:1. I'll get you corrected there. Romans 8:1. There is therefore no condemnation in them that which are in Christ Jesus. And here comes the part. Who walk after the flesh, who walk not after the flesh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You've got to read that whole verse, don't you? I had to read it a couple times. But that's, that's the key, isn't it? To walk after the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit. To have the Spirit be their guide, their comforter, and our teacher. Praise the Lord. So it says, so they, it says down here in Romans chapter 8, this is our chapter 8, uh, verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9 tells us, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. In the flesh you are the old nature. Your natural self, what some of us have a tendency to do when we stub our toe. You know, uh, the worldly identity. But in the spirit, you are of Christ, which is your new identity. You know, as we got to get up as we learned when doing the armor of God, that we have to actually get up and put the armor on. Put it on. It's the same way we got to get up in the morning and look in the mirror and see the new person, the new man in Christ. Thank you, Lord, for that. The Bible says in John 3, 15, 16, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good news? Thank you, G. I think that's good news. I give God glory for that one there. That's good news. Not only did he pay the price for our sins, not only did he pay the price for our sins, he calls us his. Remember who God says you are. 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 1 says, Behold, what manner of love that the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Well, you know, that's, the case where we need to know who we are in Christ and not be so eagerly to give that up and not be so readily to forget who we are. Because we, we say we have a devil out there, we have an adversary that's just trying to steal that from you. When he steals that from you, he steals your inheritance. He steals your family members because you've been called, and I know you've been called because you're all here. So these are all, you are the, you are the mold breakers. You are the trendsetters. I'm going to call you all that in a bag of chips. If no one else has patted you on the back tonight, I want to pat you on the back because you know who you are. You stood up and you said yes and amen. When Jesus called your name out, you said, yes, I'm going to come on up here and I'm going to confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Well, what I want to do here, I want to do something a little different here. For my, I want, to, I want to have you all stand to your feet, if you would. And we're going to make some confession tonight. And I'm praying that you'll, you'll just you know, come in an agreement with this. I want you to repeat after me after, so that you can remember. Maybe you'll remember a few of these here. And I, know, I, think you're, I think this group's going to remember every one of these. I bet you could all sit down and add some to this list. But I don't want to keep you here all night. I want you all to repeat after me that when somebody asks you who you are, this is some of your answers to them. And repeat this after me. It says, I am loved. I am loved. By his blood, I'm redeemed. By his blood, I'm forgiven. By his blood, I'm justified. By his blood, I'm sanctified. By his blood, I'm victorious. By his blood, I'm the head and not the tail. By his blood, I am above and not beneath. 
By his blood I am purchased. By his blood I am healed. And by his blood I am set free. And by his blood I have eternal life. Very good. Thank you. Give yourself a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, that's all I have for you tonight, and I hope that that's something you can take home and chew on and remember who you are. Remember how important your identity is to you. Remember that the adversary is trying to take it away from you. Remember you're strong enough. You don't have to give it up. It's worth the fight. And thank you, Heavenly Father. We just thank you. I want to close this in prayer right now. Before I do that, I need to ask a question I need, uh, before I forget. Is there anybody in this place that's never asked Jesus to come into their life, to come into their heart, and be their Lord and Savior? If there be even one, raise your hand right now, and I would like to pray with you. Praise the Lord. Well, if, if you're watching online... And maybe that's you. You know, if you just repeat this prayer after me, why don't we go ahead and we'll, we'll coach those online as well. Heavenly Father, I ask you now to come into my life, to forgive me of my sins, come into my heart. Father God, I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Father, from this day forward, I will follow after you, Father. I thank you, Father, for forgiving me. Thank you, Jesus. And we give you all the glory, Father. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Okay. I'm all guy. That's all I got for tonight. <laughs> we'll have to wait for. We'll have to wait for uh, you know uh, second part of this. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey. Amen. I I want to go ahead and say he closed that. You know, so I didn't have to come up here and finish it though. But uh, you know, thank Brother Lee for that message. You know that identity thing. Hey. Amen. Hey. Amen. Knowing who you are in Christ Jesus, be stamped with the seal by the blood of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word, Lord. We just thank you for that word from Brother Lee tonight, Lord. Lord, touch each and every last one of us, Lord. Let us remember when we each and every breath that we hold and breathe, Lord, that we are your children, Lord, that we are a representation of the kingdom. Lord, as he said, as we get up each and every day, Lord, that we put on the full armor of God. Lord, we just thank you. We praise you as we leave here tonight, Lord. Let us be examples and representation of you. In your holy and precious name, amen and amen.